when we look back to the 60s and 70s, we realize that the avoidance of a global nuclear catastrophe was a result of uh, good luck and that there was a real threat, in particular at the time of the Cuba crisis, and that we were lucky to survive. And of course, that's the impression given by uh, people like McNamara in their later reminiscences. And if we look back over that 20 years, then the greatest threat to which humanity was subject was the threat of a catastrophic nuclear war. After the end of the Cold War, the threat of a nuclear catastrophe in the sense of tens of thousands of weapons going off has diminished. But I think there are two reasons for concern. One is that uh, the threat of a few nuclear weapons going off is probably higher than ever before because of possible flashpoints in the Middle East, Pakistan, etc. And secondly, we can't be complacent because if we look back over the last hundred years and realize that during that time the Soviet Union rose and fell, there were two world wars, we can't predict the geopolitical situation 50 years from now. And we can't rule out the possibility of a new standoff between new superpowers that might be handled less well or less luckily than the Cold War was. And I think it's for that reason that the uh, aim of shifting towards a zero total number of nuclear weapons, which was a view held only by a few idealists in the 1980s, has now become part of the mainstream agenda. There was a Canberra Commission about 10 years ago which involved uh, people like McNamara as well as visionaries like Joe Rotblatt. And more recently there's been the Gang of Four in the US, as it were, and their UK counterparts who have said that, uh, at least in the very long term, we should aim to move towards zero. And I think the reason that's symbolically important is that if the uh, five major nuclear weapon powers don't articulate that as a goal and move actively towards it, then of course it diminishes the uh, pressure they can exert against further proliferation. And although proliferation has been perhaps less extreme than we might have predicted 20 or 30 years ago, when many people thought there would be 20 plus nuclear powers by now, I think there is a risk that the number may start to grow in the future quite fast if we don't take any action to uh, uh, control this and take a lead on the part of the five uh, um, major nuclear powers. Another related question, of course, is that uh, one of the ways to um, combat global warming is to have a big push towards nuclear power. And I think uh, in countries that already have nuclear power stations, uh, this is a good course of action. But I think most of us would be somewhat ambivalent about the idea of a worldwide dissemination of hundreds of nuclear power stations unless and until there's a very strict regime under the IAEA or some similar body uh, to uh, um, deal with the, um, uh, the fuel both before and after it is processed. And I think unless we have that, then I'd be very concerned indeed about the enhanced risk of proliferation that would stem from the much wider use worldwide of nuclear power stations. But I think it's very important that there should be independent voices who are well informed enough to contribute to the agenda and the discussion on nuclear disarmament. In the US there are many such people, but in other countries, particularly this country, the United Kingdom, there are rather few, and that's because I think in this country, um, defense is rather a closed world. Um, it's a lifetime career for some people. We don't have the revolving door system in the United States where those who are out of power move into think tanks, etc. So we have fewer people who are independent of government and also well informed. And also the secrecy laws here are stricter. And so for those reasons it's very hard to have an informed debate on issues of disarmament um, where one can have people who are independent and can uh, uh, contest any claims that come from the government on the basis of adequate knowledge and background. And so that's something which I think we as a scientific community need to be aware of and try to remedy. But I think the uh, Obama administration obviously by putting disarmament as a long range goal is going to raise this up the agenda and attract the interest of many scientists. I think what we need to do is to 
get more scientists engaged with these political questions. Scientists tend to um, focus very much on their research areas um, and uh, we need to ensure that they are aware that they do have a special responsibility to speak out on these questions because they can't control the way their science is used but no scientist should feel a lack of responsibility for the way their work is used and they should use their influence with their own country and also with the international scientific community to try and promote the agenda. And I think if we look at the risk of the 21st century, the risk of nuclear catastrophe is one of the looming ones. And we are perhaps complacent about it because for the last 10 or 20 years, it has seemed a diminishing threat, but is now an increasing one. Of course, if we look towards 2050 and beyond, then clearly there are going to be many global problems. Um, a combination of growing population, scarcity of resources and water, etc., need to provide clean energy for the whole world, all these things being aggravated by potentially serious climate change. So all these issues which need global solutions are going to be high on the agenda and ever higher as time goes on. But of course, looming over all of those is the threat of something which could be an actual catastrophic setback to civilization, such as a nuclear catastrophe. This didn't happen in the 60s and 1970s through good luck more than anything else, but this could happen in the future if there is a standoff between new superpowers less well handled than the Cold War was. And I think, therefore, we need to do all we can now to minimize the risk of nuclear proliferation and to minimize the role which is played by nuclear weapons and nuclear deterrence in international politics generally.